in the first week of February. From the 9th to the 11th of February, I'll be at Fully Charged, or it's now called Electrify Everything in Australia, in Sydney. I'll be doing a few sessions there, live sessions, and I'd love to see you. But even more important than that, guys, whether or not you want to see me or just see some other people or just see electric cars and electric technology, it's going to be an amazing show. If you want to get tickets there, you should. You should go see it. They're 20% off if you use my promo code. I will put my promo code in the description below. So you can click on the link, jump on, get 20% off your tickets. Now that 20% discount applies to all ticket types. So not one type, but all ticket types and all days. All right, all right, all right. So I've just spent an hour watching a video, an interview with Sandy Munro and four Tesla engineers. And to save you some time, I'm going to summarize the most interesting part of that interview the way that tesla was able to reduce wiring but not just reduce wiring they also have used ethernet technology so the speakers don't even need wires now tesla essentially has removed the wiring that has to go from one side of the car to the other so we've heard things from inside evs like tesla reduced the number of wires by x number but basically tesla's engineers refuted that information they said that wasn't quite correct this is what they said Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. So Tesla says, or Tesla's engineers just said in this interview, which was posted only hours ago, that Tesla has reduced the number of wires that have to go from one side of the car to the other in the Cybertruck versus the Tesla Model Y by 68%. So even though the Cybertruck is obviously a much bigger vehicle, and in fact, it has a lot more technology than the Tesla Model Y has, they've still been able to reduce the number of wires that go from one side of the car to the other by 68%. Now, in addition, by using Ethernet, they're actually able to meet, it means that essentially the speakers all communicate to each other instantly, and they don't need wiring. In addition to that, the high-powered harness, as in this section of the car, that requires a high powered harnessing wiring that's in all other EVs, including the Model Y, has been reduced by 84%. Now, this, these are exact numbers from Tesla, and they estimate that the weight of the wiring in the Tesla Cybertruck is approximately 50% less than an equivalent Tesla vehicle. So, let's say if the Tesla Model Y was similarly sized to the Cybertruck, then the Cybertruck, the weight of the wiring would be 50% less than what is in the Tesla Model Y. So the wiring that's for high powered loads in the Cybertruck has been reduced by 84%. Now, of course, another advantage is the 48 volt architecture allows for thinner wiring, and that means less money. Not only less money uh, for less copper, but also it also means that the weight of the wiring is significantly lighter. It's not a huge difference. It's approximately, they estimate, around 30 kilograms. But everything adds up. And you can really see why the Cybertruck, even though it does weigh 3,085 kilos, or around about 6,350 pounds, around about, even though it does weigh a fair bit, it's a lot lighter than other equivalently sized vehicles. I don't know if you guys remember, but before the Cybertruck was revealed, there was a whole bunch of media reports saying this, the biggest problem with Cybertruck was it was a complete flop because the stainless steel was simply too heavy. And obviously the stainless steel is relatively heavy. You've probably seen also another video, Car Wow. They kicked it, they, you know, they've been like, tried to bash the door and nothing happened. In fact, they even ran a trolley into it with a person in the trolley and kind of slammed that trolley up against the side of the Cybertruck, nothing happened. Uh, in a normal car, obviously, you dint, you dint the car in immediately. You'd scratch it, you'd dint it, etc. So the Cybertruck steel is obviously much stronger, and it's capable of forming an exoskeleton. So that, that does add to the weight of the Cybertruck. But because of these kinds of innovations, with the wiring, Ethernet, being able to connect, essentially being able to talk to different parts of the car remotely, it means Tesla has been able to remove some of the wiring completely, not just make the wiring smaller, but also remove a lot of what would be in normal electric cars. One fascinating uh, revelation from the interview was that 
The engineers said that 83% of the peak power comes from 13% of the load. So using first principles, they attacked the 13%. And this enabled Tesla to make the Cybertruck more efficient, much more efficient. I and mean, if you look at the size of the Cybertruck wheels, they're massive. Look at the size of the Cybertruck itself. It's a big vehicle. And yet it's still much more efficient than something like a Ford F-150 Lightning. But getting back to the wiring and the 48 volt architecture, the key point here from Tesla's engineers and using, of clearly, they all seem to come back to this concept of first principles. I don't think they, they, they really mentioned that phrase, but it's clear that's what they looked at when they built the Tesla Cybertruck. So what they did was they plan on using the ether loop, which is their ethernet connection in the car, plus the 48 volt controllers to create what they called a virtuous circle to enable more value coming out of a single connection. And they said that a big benefit of this new ether loop system was debug ability of the car, being able to sort out any issues, being able to control everything, being able to essentially fix any voltage changes. Because a lot of componentry in EVs, by the way, you probably think 12 volt, everything runs on 12 volt, it doesn't. All the different componentry in different cars might run at 1.3 volts or one volt or four volts. And then you have to do a conversion to the basically the system voltage of the vehicle. But using the ether loop, was that enabled Tesla to easily debug any challenges that come up with all the different voltages of all the different parts that go into an EV. You know, listening to Tesla's engineers talk was absolutely fascinating. I recommend you watch the video if you want to. I'll put a link in the description below. It is pretty long though. It does go for an hour and there's a bit of advertising during the video. But that said, I've got to say a big kudos. Thank you to Sandy Munro for getting these Tesla engineers together. These guys, honestly, I think, they're geniuses and I've got to give a lot of credit to them. I would love to, if in the future, what Tesla should do is when they do a, a reveal of a new product, get these guys up on the stage talking in detail with this kind of stuff. Now, if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to, but I think there's going to be a lot of people who just go, wow, this is amazing. This kind of t technology, it's so far ahead of what everyone else is doing. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching.